All right, this is a really good one, and I love gear, and this is something that really caught my eye, and I've seen a couple of people using it, and it looks absolutely bloody fantastic. So I've got the pleasure of having Tom from Lift and Lock on the uh, podcast to chat about his product. G'day, Tom. How are you? I'm pretty good, mate. Yourself? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Let's talk about this. What a fantastic idea. It's so I'll well I'll hand over to you to talk about the product and how it came about. Well, I think the, uh, one of the major things with it, it's it's not a new invention. It's a representation of a lot of old technology, which is basically a pulley block. Uh, but this is made from modern um, stainless steel and nylon with uh, ball bearings uh, mounted on rollers. And uh, we've got nearly uh, nearly 100%, works 100%. Usually you you, have, you lose a fair bit of your lifting ability going around all the, the poly blocks, but using bearings, etc., we're getting about, uh, on a four-way lift, we're getting about 93% rather than 100%, but a lot of these systems are down around about 80 to 50%. So uh, that was one of the things we set out to do. But uh, the main thing with it was with all the old systems, you lifted it up with both hands and if it was heavy, you had to hold it there with one hand, tie it off. And uh, that was the difficulty with it. And I set out to build something that uh, you could lift up with both hands, let it go and it locked in position. And uh, that's where we finally got to. And it works well that way. Well, look, I've seen it in action from uh, someone I've spoken with previously, Paige from Australian Survivor. I know she uses it with her pigs. And being able to hoist a game animal that you've shot, that's bloody brilliant. And as you were talking about, the fact that you can pull it and so you're lifting the animal and it's locking it into place so you don't have it falling down while you lift again because that is a just such a handy little feature. And it's also really compact and small, so it's not this big onerous thing that people can take out in the field with them or keep it back at camp, but there's so many positives to it from a hunting perspective. I think it's great. Well, from a hunting perspective, I'm just going back a little bit, the idea came to me one night when I was butchering. I'm an ex-farmer and I used to do my own butchering, etc. and I was butchering a, a large uh, dorset uh, lamb and this thing weighed about 80 kilos. And I realised that the worst part of it was, as I said to you, is that you've got to hold it while you're tied off. And you've got to say so you really only can lift what you can lift with one hand or you can hold with one hand. And I discovered that with a pulley block with no lock on it, you're really lifting hand over hand. You're only using one hand at a time. Whereas with this one, you put both your hands on it, you can give it a real good big pull, it locks, you re position your hands, pull, it locks, and then when you get it to where you want to have it, you just let it go and it's hanging there. And when you want to lower it, you just pull down on it to unlock it, hold it out a little bit, the uh, strap that you're lifting with, hold it out a little bit, and it slides back, and when you come to where you want to hold it again, you just let it go, and it locks in place. And that was what I was after. But uh, as you say, uh, particularly with hunters, and I can assure you, you would be amazed at the number of people in Australia and, and other parts of the world who are using it and what they're using it for. But with hunters, it can go in a, a backpack that's only weighs less than one and a quarter kilos. It's only uh, 300 by about 200, I think, in size. Put it in your pack and away you go. It's also, I have a lot of farmers buy them for calf pullers. And a lot of uh, older people, I had a guy today, he's building a crane to lift his, uh, he's a, an older bloke, and he's finding that his four-wheel drive tyres are becoming a, a bit of a lift to him. So he's building a bit of a frame, he wants one to, to lift those up with, so all sorts of applications. Yeah, that's what I noticed. I, I was looking at it and it straight away came to my mind, A, there's a heap of hunting applications you can use it in. But then I also thought about the property and I just went, oh, you know what? That would be amazing to lift my right on mower so I can get underneath and change the blades. It'd be really easy. And then from a hunting perspective, I spoke about it on previous podcasts when I was last butchering a deer. It was really, really 
cumbersome and difficult because I had it on a, a table, a plastic table, and it just made things difficult. And I've looked at all these different options out there. I've looked at, there's one with a winch that puts into your back of your car and all these different things, but they're big and they're bulky. And I just went, I want to, I've been looking for something to do the job that makes life easy, that is portable so that if I'm away, as we spoke about Tom, I do a lot down in the New South Wales State Forest down the Snowy Mountains. I wanted something that I can take down there that's not going to take up a heap of space. So if I do get lucky, I can throw it around a tree, whatever it might be, and bang, I'm up. I've got it off the ground, making my life super easy. And that's what I'm all about. And especially, I can see a lot of people as they get older in years, that being a really positive thing and making their life easier because, you know, these animals can weigh a fair bit. Well, uh, one other thing, I was talking to a, a pig shooter uh, who does uh, feral animal destruction for one of the departments or something, and he was telling me that when you're shooting pigs, you quite often finish up, you shoot the pig, and it crawls into some heap of timber or in amongst rocks and so forth. And he said that if you want to get a pig carcass out, it's just as handy horizontally as what it is vertically. And uh, that was one of the great things. He said, you don't have to get a vehicle up there, hook on it, drag it out somewhere where you can handle it. You can do it with this thing. People ring me up and tell me what they use them for rather than me telling them how to use. And it is a quality, and I'm very proud to say, made in Australia, made in the Snowy Mountains, and I actually make the whole lot of it. I uh, press the... uh, major part of the stainless steel that uh, holds everything. I press that out on a, a press that I made myself converted from a uh, hydraulic wood splitter. And the whole thing is done here in Australia, excepting I have to bring in bearings and uh, little nylon rollers from overseas. But the lock itself's made here. The uh, stainless steel cases are made here. Uh, I even get the safety springs made here. And then I put it all together in the shop. I love it because I do my best to support Australian businesses where I can. And I just think the gear is such a good bit of gear. How much do they go for? And then the other thing I want to ask you is the weight limit of it. I'm pretty sure it's 150 kgs, but I just want to double check. Well, I I had Beaver Industries at one stage were looking at buying the thing off me. And they tested it out to... uh, tested it right up to 1,200 kilograms, but I don't recommend anything like that because you're limited a bit on, you know, it depends on whether you've got a, a very fit 28-year-old or whether you've got some old uh, 85-year-old like me. Big safety factor with it. So uh, I actually have on it, it's rated at 175. But I, I leave, you know, most people have got enough sense to know whether it's one thing lifting it up there, but uh, you've got to you know, know that you can handle it when it gets up there. But I've lifted a 44-gallon drum of water, which is over 200 kilos. Okay. And 175, well, well within that limit is a 44-gallon drum of petrol, which is only about 140 kilos. Yep. So uh, at 150 to 175, uh, you can lift most things. And people say, oh, why don't you make a bigger one? I can do them from they lift about eight feet. 2.4 metres, but I'm uh, doing some at the moment that are lifting about, if people want them, I can do them, that they'll lift up, put extra webbing in them, and they'll lift up to four metres. Okay. That's more in the roller door industry. I sell a lot there. Yep. But people ring up and say, well, this is what I want to do, and I'll give them a bit of advice. Some of them listen to it, some of them don't. But uh, your $149.95, which is 150 bucks, and it includes postage anywhere in Australia. And if people want to buy, if say there's a group somewhere, other get together and they want to buy half a dozen, okay, I'll talk a bit of uh, discount to them. 150 bucks is, is bugger all in the scheme of things to make your life a lot easier. And bar a couple, I reckon it would probably lift every deer that we've got in the country. So I know a lot of the people that listen to the podcast, that's what they uh, chase and that's what they like. So one of these things is probably going to do the job for what you need it to do in the field or at home when butchering. Mate, I know uh, I'm keen to grab one because it is going to make my life so much easier. So really appreciate you coming on and talking about it. 
the fact that it's made here down the snowy mountains is a place I absolutely love. So hopefully a few listeners will, uh, if you haven't seen it, I'll put all the links in the show notes and you'll be able to have a have a squiz at it, have a look and see how valuable it could be for you. Yes, well, I, uh, all I can say is that I believe in a lot of everyone that uses it, quality product, very, very difficult to destroy. I've had a couple of blokes send them back and they've done all sorts of things with them, but I... Uh, uh, anyone like that, I usually fix it up for them and send it back to them. And if anyone has a problem with one, one or two over the, I don't know how many thousand I've sold now, but with one or two that had something wrong with them, I immediately re- replace it with a new one. I give it give it a lifetime guarantee, but at 86, I don't know how long the lifetime's going to be. <laughs> Mate, I'm super impressed that you're uh, still going hard at it. You've got a fantastic product, and I really appreciate your time coming on the podcast to tell everybody about it. As I said to everyone, all the links will be in the show notes. Um, I will post it on the socials, so check it out. You uh, definitely will be impressed like I have been. Thank you, Matt, for having me. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. If you have a topic, guest, question, or any gear that you want to hear about on the podcast, shoot us an email, australianhuntingandbeyond at gmail.com. Alternatively, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the links are in the show notes. If you haven't already, make sure you give us a review and subscribe to our podcast on whatever platform you're listening on. Thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.